well, almost, I think I'm in the, I'm starting to get up in the saddle so that I can stab someone. Right. <laughs> Should he for other things to be in the way. Like horses and swords and miniatures. Okay. Join the party. I'm Dave. <laughs> and you're watching Painting Happy Little Minis. And today we are going to paint some owl bears by WizKids with all of our paint. Our lovely Vallejo paint. Yes. And it's oh, I was supposed specific. to say from Vallejo, right? <laughs> Close enough. It's good. Yeah. Next time. We didn't practice that. Yeah, actually. no, we didn't. We should but have. That's it would okay. have been nice. That, Next time. That would have ruined the live aspect of it would everything. Have. It would have. And no, I would have ruined the live aspect of everything. <laughs> but anyway, let's yes. move on. So we have very specific paint colors that we're using today. We do. Uh, so even though we have this huge uh, sort of um, thing of paints, I'm going to Butter, call it a thing at the moment. Setup. Rack. Rack. There we go. Nice work. <laughs> this huge rack of paints here um, from Vallejo. We are going to use a very specific set, as you said. Yes. So we have... Um, should we go through them? Sure. What do we have? We have uh, so we have some black. Should always have some uh, some black in there. Sure. Okay. Here we have plain Vallejo black. <laughs> Watch this. This is heavy violet. This is uh, the violet ink. This is heavy gray, sepia shade, black wash, tan, somber gray, somber gray, somber, somber, somber. Okay. As in, every, everybody needs to be very somber right now. No laughing. I heard that no laughing. Samba. Laughing is like. The and I was like, that's samba. dancy. Uh, khaki. Somber. <laughs> uh, elfic it? flush, gold yellow, oh. orange fire, and and your favorite. Wait, seriously, Chad Brown? Chad Brown. Yes. All right, so we have all of those. These are all from the paint night uh, that Wizkids and Vallejo put together, and we are going to use only the ones that they used for this. Yep. Um, so. Yeah, I think these. Are, so the colors are all chosen by uh, Jason at uh, Realmsmith TV uh, for their uh, for Wizkids and Vallejo's paint night kit. Uh, the first one was the owl bear. I think um, a lot of stores have probably done that already. Mm -hmm. I think that was maybe. The February one. That was the February one. <laughs> okay, so with it. It's still February. We're not late yet. It is. We've got until Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the important thing you should do is definitely go into your local store. Uh, talk to them about it, ask them about it, see if you can uh, sign up slash register for the next event, for the March one, which will be super cool. And we'll be doing the March one as well at some stage, I'm guessing. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Excellent. Woo! Red Dragon. Yeah. Red Dragon. Red Dragon, sweet. So, I wonder if there'll be any red colors in that. <laughs> I think it's fun uh, because you get to have everything kind of set up for you, so it's a really good like learning experience if you're unsure of yourself. Yep. And if you are sure of yourself, it's just fun to hang out and be able to paint with everyone and see what kind of differences between the techniques, what they all make. Exactly. Definitely cool. And we're going to be doing some different things, we I are. believe. You are going to be trying to follow what they did for paint night. No. No. Not anymore? You were Not gonna. anymore. I was okay. going to do that. Well. <laughs> but that sounds are boring. Are you joining Team Win Lindsay? Then, is that what that is? I don't know if it's Team Whimsy, that's, but no, sure. Yeah, okay, oh, they, they, the two that's, options. That's, yeah, that's just <laughs> Okay, <laughs> there's, there's no third uh, team. No, there's no third <laughs> okay. team. There's... Sure, Team Whimsy uh, all the way. That's me. Uh, team Whimsy! Uh, um, but yes, cool. So, uh, one of the things I was going to say, on, on the spinner, 
We have one of the uh, owl bears straight out of the box, mm -hmm. which is uh, super cool. So that's one of the ones that, that's gonna, yes. one I'm going to work on. Um, and this other one that's spinning around with it was the owl bear that I painted at the Alliance Open House event oh. in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, in 2018. Wow! So History. It's, it still holds okay. up pretty well, I think. It does. What a throwback! It yep. looks nice. It's been it's sitting good. on my uh, sitting on my, on my desk at home. I like it. Rawr. But uh, yeah, there. There are, however, no browns in this, apart from the, the CPR ink, oh, CPR wash. That's cool. So, um, oh, and I suppose the khaki. Yeah, but this is a very purple uh, owlbear. Purple, out, very purple <laughs> owlbear. Yep. Yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to mess around. I think um, I like the spread of colors here, but I don't think they're gonna that I'm gonna end up using all of them. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. There's yep. there's a lot to work with there. For sure. So we should, uh, and well, and if we if we finish early, we have a spare one here that Leona has primed black. black. Yeah, just for you know, looks like it's on an oil slick. It does. We should get some <laughs> yeah. uh, dish from soap. Dawn. Some Dawn, Dawn dish, dish soap. soap. You could just use the uh, color shifters. The color, color shifters. Oh, that's All right. Super sparkly. Oh. I like that. We, we can think about that. <laughs> we might do that. But yeah. Uh, hey everyone in the chat, um, Michael we... and Seth and Jeff and Byron and Timothy and Clive. Um, we have Cat. Uh, we have Lord Draconum. It's a good name. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Lord Draconum. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, Lord Draconum has his owlbear painted. Oh. David Moffat. Woohoo! Owlbear party. It is. If you have your owlbear at home, paint with us. Paint along with us. We're having our own paint party. Yep, that I sounds like a plan. I also grabbed some owlbears from the group, so when we look at minis, we can look at those first. Uh, owlbear party. Ain't no party like an owlbear party. Exactly, because an owlbear party don't stop. <laughs> um, Leona, I don't care what Johnny says about you. You, you are wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't want to be sowing discord or anything. But. <laughs> Okay, let's begin. I'm gonna actually, and everybody looking at my, my palette there. I was doing some painting this morning and the, the water, you can see that, still see that there's water fresh in the, in the uh, foam. And of course, when I brought it along, it tilted in the case and the freshest paint, the red, ran all the way along. So I'm just gonna work around it. I hope everybody's okay with that. So what are you gonna start with? You're starting with the... I'm starting with the charred brown, and right. I'm gonna get that all over, and then I'm gonna go from there, because I am winging it. Winging it. Winging it like an owlbear. Nice. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the, the funny thing with the owlbear, in, in, in the research I did... Yes, you were um, talking about that owlbears. earlier. Yes. The, the, you are now an owlbear expert. You're like, an owlbear bite. You are the Steve Irwin of owlbears. Crikey. Owlbears only. Crikey. There we go. Crikey, Your Steve best Irwin. Steve Irwin impression, but only for owlbears. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know where to go from that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just stunned. Yeah. Steve Irwin. But no, it's, it was like, I, I should look this up. I should find out. Because I, I know that, like, Previously, like last year, when we had still had Rick, yeah. before Rick left for his big adventure, <laughs> the, 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 no, Rick still on the planet. <laughs> he's traveling. I think he's in Boston at the moment. He's got Pax East this weekend, and he was at he's still on the Toy planet. Fair. He's, he's, not... he's still, still still with us, but just not here in the studio with us. Um, I, I thought I should do some research. That makes it sound like is he's what in I'm space. saying. So that I so that somebody so if. I can answer the questions that I would have asked Rick, um, such as, what's the origin of the owlbear? What is the origin of an owlbear, Dave? So apparently, apparently Gary Gygax enjoyed, uh, enjoyed some games of chainmail, which was a more a sort of mass sort of combat fantasy war game sort of thing that was around in the early 70s, um, right around the time they were starting to develop D&D uh, &D, or sort of mess around with D&D. &D. And uh, 
for uh, the people who would come and play Chainmail at his uh, his place, he liked to throw in the occasional um, sort of crazy uh, monster, mm -hmm. crazy thing that they would fight at some point. Uh, and one of the places he'd find these was in uh, dime store toys. So I like that. He found a pack that was labeled prehistoric creatures from Hong Kong, which oh. therefore also included um, some cool uh, kaiju <laughs> and, uh, and that sort of stuff. And that, in a they there. existed. Pardon? Because they existed. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Back in the day. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so the, the owl bear was in there. It was one of, the, <laughs> one of the, these plastic figures. <laughs> From the from one of those sets. That's pretty cool. It yeah, is, that is, is really cool. It is pretty neat. So uh, yeah, he brought the owlbear in. That's also where the the bullet or the boule. I can't remember how to was pronounce it. Is that one it. of the kaiju? No. I, well, maybe it was. Maybe it was one of the kaiju. Uh, but yeah, that's where where that originally came from, and the rust monster. Oh. Hmm. So the things you learn when you do some research. Just saying. Uh, yeah, and so they've, they've actually appeared in every edition of D&D &D since. That's really fun. As well as a number I of other like places. I like that. That's fun. Yep. So that was my fun little bit. And I thought, I wonder, wonder what the, the story is about them in the background. And it's like the Wikipedia article that I was reading. So I'm not really an expert. I can just read a Wikipedia article. Uh, no, no, you're definitely an expert now. <laughs> an expert of it, <laughs> right. Um, said that uh, in D&D, &D, the origin story is, is basically, it's fairly vague. Nobody really knows or particularly cares. But uh, there's, there's a suggestion that it was a, um, an experiment, a wizard's experiment gone wrong. That's what you were saying, and I told you that I would. I'm down for it. You would totally do those. Yeah, except Velociraptor Chicken. That's my cross. So my response to Velociraptor Chicken was it, because Gretchen <laughs> said she wanted like little cute, cuddly animals, and I said Velociraptor Chicken. There's nothing in there, in either of them, that says cuddly and cute. <laughs> it would be adorable, and it would it would be like chickens are known for bonding with their owners if you're not eating them. If you have like just like a small flock that you're using for eggs right. and you're nice to them, then you are part of the flock because they're so like pack oriented. Okay. And they'll, they'll be friendly. I, I didn't say, if I wanted to be Much mean, like Velociraptor, right? <laughs> if I wanted to be like truly diabolical, Velociraptor, Canadian geese. Oh, that would be terrible. That would be terrible. For a second, or though, I just Velociraptor thought, swan. I thought you were just going to say Canadian. <laughs> just, just Canadian. <laughs> Velociraptor, Canadian cross. <laughs> yep. uh, but yeah, Velociraptor swan, or a Velociraptor Canadian goose for like, for guarding purposes. Okay. That would be... Yeah, definitely for, for some sort of guarding purposes. But uh, I feel like that would be the ultimate cross. That would be pretty fierce. <laughs> Terrifying. Frightening. It would make some cool noises though. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to think about it. Oh. Five Mills also had that fun fact about the boule or the oh cool bullet. Excellent. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yep. How it was in the first pack. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's really neat. Fun gaming facts. Yeah. So, Dave, what yep. color are you using at what, the moment? What color am I using at the moment? At the moment, I'm using uh, the khaki, khaki, khaki. Tacky? Tacky. However you like to pronounce it. But uh, yeah, so I, what I wanted to do is I, I am going to use some of the purple mm -hmm. for the, uh, the, where is it? Yeah, the extra opaque, the heavy violet, which is this one. But I wanted to give it a lighter color um, underneath. So uh, I wanted to start with the, um, with the khaki and just go, sort of just paint half of it really. Kind of like the front half. Which is funny because I'm doing the exact opposite but the same idea of having a lighter belly. Oh, cool. I'm just Excellent. starting with the dark half. <laughs> what, um, what color are you going to do for the... 
Um, I underbelly. was thinking about going in and doing a bit of cream, but I have to, to fade that. I'm kind of doing a little bit of ombre with the uh, tan. Oh, some of the tan. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I think that'll be good. They'll be similar yet different. Cool. I'm going to go, yep, oh, screen has on now. Actually, I'm going to give this a bit more of a shake. Yeah, there. Yeah, particularly the uh, the heavy opaques or the um, the extra opaques are, um, they are a bit, they can be a bit thick. So if it comes out um, thin on your palette, it means you probably need to shake them a little bit more. But uh, yeah, the heavy opaques are, are great for, um, surprise, surprise, coverage. <laughs> Five. Is not the chicken a descendant of the raptor? Um, yes and no. Close enough. They're in the same genus. Too. They are. <laughs> the, theropods are the brand of dinosaurs. Those are like your raptors, your T-Rexes, your all beast. that. They're the ones more closely related to birds. Yeah, I was going to say, it has wings. The chicken doesn't use him. The chickens can kind of fly. They can do a... They can flutter. They can do a thing. A thing. Mm -hmm. That sounds frightening. Frightening. Aren't chickens doing anything? Except laying eggs. Chickens can only lay eggs for about three to four years. Yeah? Yeah. You're saying that after that they should be allowed to fly free? <laughs> I mean, most people just eat them. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's right. <laughs> um, ducks, tasty, on the other hand, chickens. have a much longer laying period. Oh, okay. Will lay for almost their entire lives. Okay. Yeah, ducks. They're not as, they're a little bit more upkeep than chickens, though, and people, uh, apparently duck eggs taste a little different because they have a higher protein and fat content. Okay. Uh, fun farming facts with Gretchen. <laughs> But back to owl bears. Yeah, but back to owl bears. Do you think owl bears lay eggs, or do they have uh, like mammals? Do they just have like cubs? That's a great question. You're the owl bear expert. Uh, I'm not sure exactly that they um, they reproduce. They might not. But they're, if they're in the wilds, like. Uh, I, well, I, but they are magical creatures. They are so magical maybe they creatures. Just form. They are definitely magical. No, um, they, I think they they might not actually uh, reproduce. They might just be, um, oh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? There might just be like a, a little sort of cottage industry going on in, the, like, in a dark corner of the realm. Okay. Where they're just, where they're just, yeah, just putting owls and bears in a room and then magically combining them. And then sending them off into the world. Yeah. I mean, all right. Without any additional training. I like, like that. I like the, t the idea of having, I think baby owl bears would be cute, though. Again, super dangerous. Timothy's <laughs> They'd be up all, like, 24-7. They wouldn't sleep, except during winter. <laughs> Could you imagine them, though? They'd be so fluffy. Yeah, okay, sure. They'd be fluffy. <laughs> They'd be so fluffy. The scariest bit would be like, you know how grizzlies are like super protective of their cubs? Yep. That would be the scariest bit because then you'd have mama owl bears. Right. Which I feel like incorporate the worst bits of both owl and bear protectiveness. <laughs> I, I want to apply that to all owl bears, but. Uh, 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 David says, I'd think they're marsupials, cute little baby owl bears in a pouch. <laughs> I wonder if. They are monotremes. Oh, yeah. And there you go. That so, would like be the, cool. uh, just putting my Steve Irwin hat on for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like the, uh, the platypus or the echidna, which lay, they're mammals that lay eggs. I like that idea. Yeah. That implies people in the universe could eat owlbear eggs. Right. Possibly. Yep. <laughs> has, any, has, any, has anybody out there run a d, &D adventure where the, the aim was to find some owlbear eggs? Oh, that's a really good idea for one, though. Yeah. 
I bet you somebody has. That's a good idea for an adventure. I like that. Um, I suspect. Kat says, does anyone else wonder what Dave had for lunch? He seems to be in a very weird place. Odd, yet fun. Odd, yet fun? I had pork bulgogi for lunch. That sounds really good. Uh, it is, yeah. Pork bulgogi Dave Moffat says maybe he had a Canadian lunch. Hey. Eh? <laughs> no, I had uh, Korean. Yep. Bulgogi is the best. It is wonderful. I want to go out for Korean barbecue. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Dave just makes me hungry while we're painting. Yeah. Lord Drakum says, uh, but you could train them if they are young, maybe. The owl bears. Yeah, that's another good idea. I'm. Points um, towards owlbear eggs. You're leaning towards owlbear eggs? Or baby owlbears in general. Right. Oh. I'm still super worried by it. Clive on Facebook says, the Rick and Morty D&D starter sip pack has an owlbear nest. Oh, With an owlbear eggs nest. In it. Ooh. They are a monotreme. Hooray. Crikey, I was right. <laughs> Now this is a... And now we know. That purple. That purple looks really good. That's a very strong purple. It is, it is a very strong purple. Um, sitting here in Baltimore as I am and, and feeling a little bit <laughs> sort of ravens kind of color. Yeah. But... Uh, it happens in Baltimore. It's it just the longer you're here, <laughs> the, yep. the greater the possibility of the ravens and the Oreo color schemes just... Just popping up, oh, it's just embedding themselves in your psyche. <laughs> I'm gonna go for that. Next, yeah. you're gonna be like, mmm, I'm craving some Old Bay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a lovely scent uh, from McCormick's as I was coming in. Oh, really? Yeah, they're toasting their uh, coconut Ooh. today. Sounds so good. So. I'm just hungry now. <laughs> Pork bulgogi and toasted coconut. Did you just not have lunch? Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be it. I had a late breakfast. Yeah. Well, one of the things um, with the with this, it's looking very blue from the top there. Yeah. It is, but and when uh, I look at it here, it's purple. Yeah, it's I got, think that's just it's got the, the purple sort of sheen. Oh, that's not it. Oh, I know it's purple. There we go. But. Uh, yeah, so uh, the the khaki underneath, the really her game color khaki, uh, is quite desaturated. Pardon me, desaturated yellow. So, mixing a bit of the um, the heavy the violet, well, yeah, heavy violet, in with the um, the khaki to get a bit, a bit of a desaturated look. It's kind of starting to look a little bit um, more sort of lavender, I think. So now I'm just going to push this in along the uh, the edges, so that that line that I uh, painted where the khaki meets the purple. We'll see how that goes. Kind of messing around with it. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to um, do the sh or which way I'm going to do the shading for it, but it. Um, but I mean, shading the uh, the purple because the purple's quite dark. Uh, to come back in and shade uh, the purple, I'm probably going to want to use uh, some of the maybe the black wash, or I could mess around see how dark the violet ink is, um, or possibly mix the two. But both of these uh, over that khaki are going to look um, a little bit too intense. The, the contrast is going to be a little bit too much. So I might use some of the, the sepia on the, um, on the khaki. Or I might dry brush it with some of the um, elfic flesh here and then put the sepia wash over. That's a good idea. But there are options, plenty of options. I think this is a... Yeah, it came out pretty nicely. 
And there's a few areas where I've, I haven't gone sort of right up to the, to the edge. You can see under that eyebrow there. So I'll come back later with a finer brush and um, get under that detail there. And David Moffat was asking about Ravens. And yes, that's a reference to uh, our sports team. <laughs> that's yes. our NFL. That's some sports ball. NFL sports ball. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, yes. yes. That's, that's the, uh, the Ravens um, football team. For the National I don't Football know if we League, actually American have a lot of football. the bird itself. We have a lot of crows. Yeah, every. Uh, I've seen ravens. Yeah. Yeah, no, we have we have them. They're definitely I here. I saw a bald eagle the other day. I see bald eagles all the time. Yeah. I don't think I've ever actually seen a raven. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely seen I've a lot seen of crows. Raven. Ravens are huge. Yeah, yeah. ravens are yeah. giant. Yep. But no, in. Uh, like late September, early October, the um, the crows will come through, and we'll have huge, huge um, flocks of them. I don't mind the crows so much. I don't like them when they poop all over my car. That's fair, I guess. If, they, if they're not doing that, they're fine, but as soon as they start doing that, they go down in my estimation. <laughs> Okay, so we can see that. That's a really simple, very quick transition there. That's um, that's working very well. Then you can uh, mix in a bit more of the, the khaki there for just putting it along there. If you really wanted to take your time with it, I think you could do this and do it sort of feather by feather. But we all know we've got more miniatures we need to paint, so I'm going to go for the very quick way. <laughs> Still working on my beautiful little ombre, my little yeah, the lovely fade. Oh, yeah. check it out! Yeah, it's a good Looking fade. Looking very cool. It's a very nice fade. Uh, uh, uh. So he's dark there, and if I turn him this way, he's lighter on the side. So that is just kind of using dry brushing to its best advantage. He's casting a shadow there with his hands. So you can't. There we go. Now you can see it, kind of. Yep. Um, but I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then I'm going to take a cream. I'm going to run it with his belly. And then I'm going to draw that up, too, so that you get that little bit of dry brush blending going on. And then I'll probably go. Uh, back through with the black and add some little finer details. Cool. And that is currently using the tan. Vallejo color. There we go. Try to get all the different shades of brown. <laughs> David Moffat asks, is Baltimore animal appropriating? <laughs> No, No, not they really. had a thing about the ravens because they like to claim Edgar Allan Poe. Because he lived here for a short while. He, almost, he also died here, though. Yeah, yeah that's This is where he got super drunk. That's why, yeah. Very here. Yep. Yep. So they're like, he's ours now. Totally. That's absolutely fine with me. You don't strike me as someone who has very strong Edgar Allan Poe uh, preferences. Hmm? Is that your favorite, Leona? Uh, no. <laughs> I can tell you my least my favorite Edgar working. Allan Poe anything. Yeah, I really like the one where Okay. Oh no. Your mic's not working. Luna's mic is not working. So. Oh, David Moffat says ravens are a big part of our way of life in the Yukon. I'm al always curious to find out where else they are. Yeah, our ravens cool. are purely football and uh, 
Edgar Allan Poe related? Oh no, there's the occasional like live one. But the occasional live, live one. one. But, <laughs> but, live but like, one. but Baltimore's obsession with them, I should say. Right. Yes. Like, okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm really getting at. That's fair. Like they don't, they don't have any. <laughs> Baltimore, like the only, the way of life animal of Baltimore, I would say, is the crab. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. On the uh, on the weekend, uh, we went for, uh, my wife took us to a um, a nature reserve uh, out on the edge of the Chesapeake Bay, mm -hmm. and there was some fantastic stuff there to learn about um, oysters. Yeah, oysters are cool. Oysters. Yep. So there are, um, oysters can process apparently like 50 gallons of water. They can filter 50 mm -hmm. gallons of water in a day. And there were so many oysters in the Chesapeake Bay in like the 1500s, 1600s, that the, the water was filtered basically every week. That's amazing. Yep. So. And then we ruined it. I yep. mean, there are people, when they first arrived, like when the couple of Europeans, they'll write about how the Chesapeake was like clear. Yep. You could That's see to the bottom. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Super impressive. And at the moment, it takes about a year to, for them, for the, for the oysters that are remaining to do that processing. So. Bring back our oysters. Yep. Oh yeah, someone said never more. That's a good one. <laughs> never more. I I don't have a favorite uh, Edgar Allan Poe, but my least favorite is The Bells. Like that poem. The Bells, 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 oh, Bells, Oh, yeah, bells. I know that one. Bells. Is that all it is? Just yes. Yeah. <laughs> I you suspect feel like you're going crazy. I suspect that it's not supposed to be sort of read in that, that sort of tone of voice or that cadence. Or I don't know what you're getting bells, at. Bells, 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 bells. Seems kind of unbecoming of... Bells. Yeah. <laughs> so. so yeah, for the audience, my favorite one is the Spanish Inquisition, Inquisition one. Sp I don't remember what that's called. It's where they like slice. It's like slice, slice. I'm not sure. That's a good one. Not having gone to school in Baltimore. I think my, my actual knowledge of Edgar Allan Poe's material is, gotcha. is somewhat lacking. We forgive so. you. I appreciate it. I only went to school in Baltimore for my middle school and high school years, so. But I mean, that's when you're, that's kind of when you're studying. Like Thanks. you're gonna read Poetry, literature. right? Yeah. That's when you're gonna encounter it. Okay, I just wanted to pop some eyes on him. So. So, but uh, yeah, I poured out a little bit of um, the elfic flesh, mm -hmm. so I can do a little bit of um, dry brushing on the belly. So that, just uh, wiping some of that paint off on my um, paper towel, just off camera. It's one of the things I love about the, this Albert model, in particular, is that the texture on it is great. It really does lend itself well to using inks and dry brushing and yep. all those lovely things. Those are wonderful techniques. Now but yeah, it's definitely great. Steal some khaki. But. Uh, I was going to say, I was going to go back to uh, David Moffat out in uh, the Yukon. That's cool. What do you do out there, David? In the Yukon. I actually visited Yukon Territory in 2000. That's cool. I did some, uh, I hiked uh, with my dad on the, uh, the Chilkoot Trail, which is where the... Um, Oh, sorry. When the uh, the Yukon Gold Rush was on, 
1897, 98. There was the path that they used to get from um, sort of the ocean up to the Yukon gold fields. So that was a lot of fun. There we go. Looking uh, pretty good. So I think I think for the beak, I'm going to go with something similar to this beak. Yeah, I like that beak. That's a that's a good color combo. And it's going to work really well with that um, saturated purple, I think. Is purple a normal color for owl bears? Albert, owl bear expert. They're magical. <laughs> so there is no such thing as a normal for owl bears. They can be all sorts of colors. Nice. Indeed. Whimsical, if you will. Yes, they are indeed the, the most whimsical of magical creatures. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, so. What's that? Never mind. Never more. Never mind, never more. So for this, I'm just uh, touching up that um, some of the edges around or pieces around the edges of the, uh, I guess, the mutton chops. <laughs> the model looks like it has mutton chops. That's fair yeah. enough. Just uh, touching those up a little bit, and then I'll come back with some orange fire in the mouth. Actually, there might be a place to use that, uh, that violet ink. Oh, yeah, that could have an interesting effect. Yeah. So. Just inside here. Do, do, do. Uh, yeah, Richard Tyler says black would look good on the beak, too. Oh yeah, yep, I think so. I think I might go for black on the um, the claws. I like that. I think it'll just finish off these sort of purple limbs, and purple arms nicely, and then uh, it'll end book in those uh, those khaki feet as well. It'll look quite obvious. But I think that would be very cool. And, oh, yeah, I'm shaking with that. This is where I need that miniature holder cat. Oh. You we see. have them. I found them. Oh, found them. we found them? That's big, yeah. Big one? Whereabouts is it? I'm looking around. Oh, I see it. The owner's going to run around and grab it. Oh, it's on, cool. it's actually on camera. It's on camera? Yeah. No. Oh. oh. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Brief so. moment, everyone knows Leona exists. <laughs> but she's not just a figment of their imaginations. <laughs> well, they're all, they've all heard her talking. Okay. Cat Leona saves the day again. <laughs> Yay! So, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to point out um, why I needed to mention it. But uh, so, because I've been painting in this section here, I've been holding the the back of it. This has been rubbing against my hand, so having the the miniature holder will allow me to go back in, touch that up, like it never even happened. And then once we finish painting it, I can um, hit it with a um, a varnish. Who actually? We have some mediums. Do we have any varnishes? I don't think we have any varnishes here, but. Yep. We'll probably hit it with a spray varnish. But, of course, now because it's taller, <laughs> it's going to be tough to fit in. Here we go. You can move the camera if you want. 
Yeah, I might need to do that. <laughs> As I try to get all the toes of my, my bear. There you go. Okay. All my bear toes. I'm just gonna lift it up a bit. That works great. Let's look at some owl bears. Would I? I'd love to see some owl bears. What do we got? Whose owl bear is coming up first? Oh, David Moffat's owl bear. Dave Schrumpf. Oh wow! Check that out. Too many Daves. I. I'm just gonna give up now. I'm done. Oh, that's a really good one, though. That looks awesome. I, I love the. Uh, I mean, we talked about what color, what colors are they, and what color could they be, and that sort of thing. But that's just uh, that's very cool. I love that natural kind of. Is that like that's like a horned owl, right? Great horned right? owl. Great yeah. Horned owl. Um, but yeah, picked it out there perfectly, Dave. Nice work. Oh, also great. <laughs> Excellent, Chris. That one's very cool. Um, yeah, I love the the way you picked out the feathers on the uh, on the arm, and also those feathers around the eye. Those are really nice. Cheek. Yeah. Just. I'm not gonna have nearly so much detail because we don't have the time. <laughs> no, this is true. This is true. But uh, but no, really well done, Chris. Nice work. <gasps> Michael Gonzalez. Ooh, that's... Half owl, half bear, all grumpy. What were you going to say? I, was, I like how it's a, a different color scheme, how it's more like a snowy owl. Snowy owl, yeah. It does look great, doesn't it? Got a fantastic... Uh, that cold uh, that cold gray look to it. And yet, so all of these so far, like Dave's owl, Chris's owl, and now Michael's owl, those eyes oh, yeah. have been fantastic. I feel a bit crappy just having painted... <laughs> like black eyes. I was gonna go Looking, for golden eyes, as well. but now I don't. Know, now I'm like, oh man, everyone else went for golden eyes. Do I want golden eyes? Do I want? You totally want to. There, like, you, go. Yeah, go there you go. <laughs> you totally want to do that. Yep. <sighs> that one looks great as well, Mike. I think um, it's feeling much more like my my original one here. But obviously, I I just haven't paid enough attention to owl eyes. <laughs> but but now that I'm looking at these, I'm super excited by them. Thanks very much, guys. They're looking great. <laughs> and this. Oh, fantastic. Cool. So this is the one that Mike painted uh, in store? Yeah. Awesome. Really Even nice. better. That's great. Oh, Jason Sutton. Nice. I wonder who makes this one. Oh, I like how it has a, a, a rock. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like it's climbing forward over. Yeah, and the, the feathers on the wings forth. have, they're, they're a nice, like, uh, different yeah. shape. They, they kind of yeah. switch it up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I uh, think that looks great. And I love the, um, it almost feels like sort of uh, the matted fur along the arm there. Yeah. So that looks looks great, Jason. Yeah, did a really nice job there. And again, that the sort of the horned um, eyebrows look, uh, look fantastic. I'm super jealous <laughs> as somebody who um, enjoys messing around with his eyebrows. Wish my eyebrows were like that. Wish you had you had owlbear eyebrows. These ones, these owlbears, I'm not 100 percent sure on. <laughs> so these are not. These are not owlbears. <laughs> no, <laughs> say this and so, Leona. <laughs> <laughs> so, <owlbears. laughs> so yeah, David uh, did some uh, daddy-daughter paint time um, with these uh, these robots. These robots, uh, and the models themselves, have got a lot of character, and I think the. The paint jobs that you guys put on them, um, they look fantastic. But I really love the, uh, how your daughter got stuck in with the, the blues and the greens I and really, the yellows. Yeah. I like the color scheme. And you know what it makes me think of? Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yes. Which like, is? Leona knows, and that's all that matters. It's true. It's true. <laughs> um, sure, ask me about owlbears, I can tell you. But Legends of the Hidden Temple, not a chance. 
Yeah, in the it was 90s? a TV show in the 90s, and you had to, it was a reality show, you had to go in this temple and solve all these puzzles, and then if you got them wrong or you went to the wrong place, scary guys would come out and grab you. Okay, so it's kind of like uh, the Crystal Maze. Yes. yes. But it has like really? similar, wow. yeah, similar color schemes and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's like, oh, that's cool. It reminds me of that. It's a good color scheme. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Uh, Aaron Perkins. Into this was kids male human rogue mini. That looks very cool. You can see him like very relaxed. Very relaxed. There's a little bit of the the like Will Scarlet. Kind of thing about him, um, that sort of the auburn hair and the the red scarf. But yeah, he's definitely relaxed. This rogue knows what he's doing. He has no fear. Yeah. No, looking good, Aaron. Nice work. Oh, fantastic! Sparky has uh, been painting up some uh, night haunts. I like that blue. Yep. Very nice. Super ghosty. Very ghosty. But I love the um, I love the rusty metals as well uh, on those sides. Mm -hmm. You can see the you can really get a feel for the texture on them. That looks great. But now these look uh, look fantastic. Beautiful work. Oh, Clive has been painting up the fire giant. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> That's looking really good. I like the highlights on the uh, bone structure of his face. Right, yep. yep. Looking good. And that, uh, that hair is looking awesome too. Nice work, Clive. Drew. Who is that? Endymion Nakia. Who's Drew? Yeah. I'm, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> well, that looks nice. Yep. It's kind of crazy. Crazy. So this is a, it's a Primaris Marine. Oh, this might be his, uh, so in 140,000 with Space Marines, there's a, you can give a Space Marine Captain a jump pack and a big hammer, and it flies around smashing things, <laughs> and it's known as a Smash Captain. I bet you this is Drew's Smash Captain. I think so. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. On the, um, on the theme of owlbears, I'm loving those wings. Yeah, the wings, I mean, the... Sculpting is fantastic, but I think your uh, your painting there, Drew, has really picked those out. It looks great. Oh, and Michael has been painted a barmaid from the the uh, Pathfinder Battles set. She's looking very cool. She's looking good. I like how she has the hip pop. Yep. Sassy. Sassy, definitely a sassy barmaid. She probably has to hip check a lot of patrons. Probably. I would expect. As someone who used to be a barmaid. <laughs> But I'm loving the uh, the green and the um, and the auburn hair. Mm -hmm. It's looking really good. Great combination. Nice work. Oh, and Brian, Arius. Oh, I love that sword. So, that sword I knew looks you would love ice. That sword. It I looks like it. ice. It does. It looks great, doesn't it? It's just. I think it's a. I think it's a shiny blue metal. It's it's a good texture. Yeah. But uh, no, looking cool. I love the expression on his face. Ugh. <sighs> Gotta keep killing. Maybe one day I'll be allowed to die. For reals this time. But now looking great. Oh, Junebug and Diabolus the dra Devil Dragon. This one really cool. Having just uh, been messing around with a whole bunch of purple, I think those wings are looking great. Yeah. Yep. I love the. Uh, just, the just that uh, touch of warmth to the, the highlight tone. Which is working really nicely. Good work, June. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Bless you. Yep, I absolutely love this when I saw it on the uh, on the page. The um, and the the flesh work yeah. on it is is fantastic, and then the um, the tattoo work over the top of that, again, absolutely awesome. So the tattoos are painted. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. not just on like. I I, I must have been. I, I mean, I don't. I don't know the miniature. Sometimes the texture of the miniature. It, it, on it, there. Yeah. I mean, it, they might be on there, but but still, I think the. Um, oh yeah. The work on there, the, the highlighting and shading on them. 
Um, just looks fantastic. But uh, no, fantastic work, Casey. Ryan has painted up uh, the XV-85 Commander, which looks very cool. I always cool. love that shade of orange. Yeah. With like the little pops of teal. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you've hit those, uh, you've got those teal pops working really well there. Ryan. It's always it's very like sci-fi, but friendly sci-fi to Friendly sci-fi, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to describe it other than friendly sci-fi. It's it's excellent. That's friend colors. It's it's excellent. You know that you know that they're friends because it's, yeah. Star Wars has trained I mean, the, the, me. Yeah, it has. the The rebel uh, fighter pilot suits are orange with uh, white accents. The X wings are white with orange stripes and that kind of thing. It's a fantastic uh, mix, orange, white, and teal. It's, yeah, they're good nice work. colors. Nice work. Cool. Now, having seen those, I will have to go and paint those eyes. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll try and do it now. But actually, first thing, first thing I'm going to do though is try the um, mess around with this violet ink in the um, in the mouth. Oh, see, I am going back through and adding some more details to my feathers. All right. And I'm hoping. That it looks nice. I'm not basing it off of actual owls or bears. <laughs> I'm basing it off of things you find in nature. Right. By like complete happenstance, it could end up. Could end up matching the, the a, owl a bear or, or an owl. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm just gonna check the chat. Um, David Moffat says I lived in Calgary. I've lived in Calgary. Uh, since 2007, but grew up in the Yukon. Did you stop in the uh, local gaming store in Whitehorse? Actually, I did. Yeah. Oh my I have to think back because, uh, yeah, again, like 20 years ago. But uh, yeah, I was there with my uh, with my mum and my dad. Hmm. And uh, missed connections. Yeah. Maybe you maybe you were there playing when I was there. Usually, when I go into a gaming store, I'm, I'm fairly quiet. I just wander around, see what they've got. I always like to buy something, regardless of which store I go to. I like that. Yeah. It's like, so buying dice, buying card holders, like the card holding books and that kind of thing, or paints or glue or whatever it might happen to be. I usually save the big purchases for my, my local game stores, but if I'm traveling, I still like to do that. But uh, talking, speaking of colors, um, Motor Breath Jazz says an owlbear's coat ranges in color from black brown to yellowish brown. Its beak is a dull ivory. Is from the D and D three point five Monster Manual. The only entry you can find on short notice. There we go. So maybe my purple is a little bit outlandish. Well, wizards made them, so. Wizards made them. Mine was a naturally hatched owlbear. Okay. And right yours. Here was a put a bear and an owl in the room and do some magic. <laughs> owl do bear. some magic owl bears. That's exactly what mine was. So Oh yeah. Josh Potter says great advice on your shirt, Dave. Good Pot for all aspects of life. On your shirt. All great advice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Make your painting a habit, not a chore. There we go. I always, uh, could, think could, could I get that shirt, Dave? Yes, Leona. You know, not this particular one. <laughs> I need to wear this one home. <laughs> but yes, if you were fishing for details, yes, um, our friends at uh, armorclass10.com um, have uh, put uh, three designs together for me. So uh, this is one of them. I think this is probably the most popular one. Um, so if you head to armorclass10.com and type Dave Taylor Miniatures, you will uh, find this as one of the options. And then there's the one which is, uh, I think I was wearing it last week. Yeah. It's my one for uh, Armies, Legions, and Hordes, which is the book that I wrote. And I've got one that's also got a like, cool little 
um, logo of me, I guess. Yeah. My hair and glasses and eyebrow. The important parts. <laughs> All they need. All they need. They forgot the paint on your lip. All oh, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll probably, I wanted to make sure that we could have other designs, so I'll come back to that one later. <laughs> but yes, there's a, um, on, the, on the topic of like making, making your, make your painting a habit and not a chore, there's a, um, I always think back to a line from uh, Dune, the movie, the David Lynch movie. Uh, where Patrick Stewart playing um, Gurney Halleck comes to Paul Atreides and says, well, it's time for, uh, we're going to practice fighting. And uh, Paul Atreides says, I'm not in the mood. And he goes, mood is a thing for cattle or love play. <laughs> Which basically suggests that you should be able to do everything else at any time. So if it's a habit, it doesn't, doesn't matter whether you're feeling motivated or not. You can sit down and just do some mechanical painting, I guess. Yeah. That's not painting mechanical things, but just doing basic stuff. Putting down block colors, painting boots. All the things that maybe are a little bit boring. I you can like save you the exciting stuff for... In the, uh, you end up getting in the mood for painting if you just... Kind of like how if you want to... Like if I want to work out, but I don't want to work out. Yep. If I could just get to the gym, oftentimes I'm... Right. Now that you're there, you're like, right. oh, I, may, I may as well enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> the noises I make while at the gym. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I turn into Blue's Clues. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Kat says, David, as a teacher and having raised daughters, too many. <laughs> I thank you. Folks don't realize how impactful the little things can be for our girls. Uh, and David says, oh, cool. yep. referencing, yeah, something, uh, the picture. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I'm like trying to read through it at the same time. Like, mm. Doing things at the same level. Uh, that is a good point, David. Um, little kids tend to do that, though. They get so mad. They want to be so good. Yeah. And then they get better than you. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny. We, um, so my daughters are now currently ten and eight. And at PAX last year, I saw the um, the folks that um, created the dice game Tenzi, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a fun and goofy game. Um, that you can play a number of different ways. But they were there, and I went up and had a chat and said that my daughters had really enjoyed playing Tenzi a lot. And um, they had a couple of card games there. I think they had three, three new card games. Mm -hmm. And so I went through and demoed each of the, the card games. And was like, okay, I'm gonna get one, for, one each for each of my girls. And I was able to pick them so that the one I got for Emily, the 10-year-old, she was better at it than Lucy, mm -hmm. but the one that I picked for Lucy was very, very, very suited for Lucy and, and Lucy's way of thinking. So, yeah, now they can play, and I know that pretty much all the time Emily's going to win one of the games, and uh, Lucy's going to win the other. That's so nice, though. It's definitely yeah, it's cool when you're able to f to find that kind of thing. But yeah. Good parenting hack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's have a close one. Raw. Ah. So I, I think if I go in and paint the um, paint those that gold ring in the eyes, mm -hmm. it's going to look very cool. And I'm thinking maybe I'll paint the eyebrows black as well. That's one of the other things that stood out to me from those um, from those examples that we saw. I think it looked really neat. So 
I'll do that first. And you can come back and do those eyes. Right. Excellent. So do we have anybody else in the in the chat that's actually uh, faced a an owl bear in an adventure? And do they have suggestions for what would be the best way to take one out? I mean, suggesting only adventuring during the daytime. <laughs> Clive says, "Are your owl bears a couple? Dave's owl bear is in full display to try to mate with Gretchen's owl bear. <laughs> oh my goodness! Sexual dimorphism. <laughs> I keep saying, this one's a magical owl bear. <laughs> but there we go. I have not faced an owl bear. Yeah. So I do not know the best techniques." I'm not sure to, either. Uh, but in my besides just running away. Besides running away, yeah. In my uh, investigations earlier today, I discovered that in in fifth edition they have they only have two attacks. So I guess each time they fight, they can only and basically they're kind of targeted at the same same thing because they, they come in and they do the bear hug, claw, and bite. Okay. Kind of thing. So, yeah, I think running is probably a great idea. Clive on Facebook says, go with fire-based spells. Burn the feathers. Oh, fire-based spells to burn the feathers? Yeah, that could, I, I guess that's going to work. I'm just thinking that would be kind of stinky. Yeah, but well, if you survive... Uh, fried owlbear. Fried owlbear. Tasty wing of Albert. <laughs> no, you don't like the sound of that. I didn't, I mean, <laughs> I'll, eat it. I'll try Delicious. everything once. Delicious. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'll do it in a fantasy world. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Also, Josh Potter says, uh, "Busting him with my mace." And radiant touch slash burning hands. See ya. Oh, okay. Also, yes, Sarah. These are out whiz kids owlbears. Yep. Yep. These are whiz kids owlbears. So these are the ones uh, from the from the paint night kits. So whiz kids and Vallejo have teamed up uh, to do paint night event kits for local friendly local gaming stores. And um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's Jason, our friend Jason from um, Royal Smith TV, who has put together the uh, kind of the the paints that go along with the, the kit. So I think um, each kit has a set of the paints and a bunch of the the miniatures. So check with your um, your local gaming store if they haven't done it. If they didn't do the February one or they weren't aware of the February one, I'm pretty sure they will be able to get the March one from, if they sign up with uh, their sales rep at Alliance. Yes. Which would be just cool. Okay, I'm going to ask you to switch to my cam for a second, and I'll show you the eyes. I think this Albert has seen some stuff. <laughs> Might need to, yeah, that one's a little bit too... Too extreme. Oh, yeah. How's that? A little bit better. What I'm doing there is just trying to uh, take that pupil to the edge, over the edge of that gold ring. So it looks like it's sitting in the, the shadow of those eyebrows. But yeah. That's looking great. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I can go home now, right? Yeah. No, just kidding. Bye. Okay. I think what I'm going to do as well, just quickly, is as Leona jumps back to Gretchen. <laughs> Gretchen's camp. 
Gretchen Sorry. Cam. Gretchen Cam. Nope. He's coming along. He's he's getting some little clutchings like and whatnot, black. so that his feathers are. That's looking good. I like that sort of the patterning along the. So where are you putting the black touches? So I'm putting the black touches on the tips of his uh, feathers. And I'm focusing on the white, and then I'm kind of like spotting them out towards the the other colors, but I'm I'm fading them out so that he's kind of mostly has that fletching on the white on his belly there. And then if I turn him turn him this way, you can see that it kind of fades up, and then he's all nice and tan. And then it's on the wing bits, and then the top of him is that dark, dark brown. Um, so we're we're doing some some naturally nature inspired colors. I think it's looking really cool. Um, and then kind of blending it in more where there's a fur texture. Right. To kind of show that change. That's cool. I, I don't think that's, um, I didn't really tackle that on mine. The, it's like a differentiation between the textures. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see how yeah. it's working on yours. It's looking very we'll cool. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yep. Um. <laughs> I do like that uh, in a lot of places here that the the fur does sort of lengthen and then mm -hmm. works in very close next to the, the feathers. So. so I don't feel too bad about not having picked them out. <laughs> <Generally>. <laughs> oh. oh, where are you going to use the orange? You're just mixing some more into the... I'm going to mix some into the yellow to make it a little less like into the yellow, into the white, the elf skin, okay. to become a little less uh, like goldenrod, so I can use it on his beak. Okay, cool. And then it'll play, it'll be in the same family as his eyes whenever I paint those, but they won't compete hopefully as much. Okay. That's the goal. Cool. Also, um, on Facebook, Sarah noted that there are two versions that Reaper makes two owlbear versions. Oh, okay. One is more bear looking, and the other is more owl looking, which All is right. interesting. And then also Walter says Albert the owlbear, or owlbear. Owlbear. I like owlbear. Yep. Owlbear the owlbear. That works for me. Cool. So I'm just messing around with the basing at the moment. Um, just getting something fairly quickly done. And putting down the, um, we have the, where is it? So the game extra opaque, heavy gray. Which has a, like a very warm green. It does have a very warm green feel. Yeah. A bit of it, almost an olive kind of feel, but because it's uh, one of the the opaque paints, it also has a very um, matte kind of finish, which is interesting. Look in there between the toes. So I figured I'd put that down first. Might give it a black wash and then do some highlighting with the with the somber gray. I like that. Just to mess around with it a little bit. But while I'm letting that base dry, I am going to get some of the sepia wash. Just a little bit. To do some accentuation around the around the eye there. I'm gonna focus real hard to not have crazy eyes. 
No, go for crazy eyes. They're way better. There we go. And then I can start to drag that out. Now, I know it's been a while since anybody's asked me about my paint licking. But I've just discovered that one paint that you should, probably shouldn't lick your brush after using oh. is the sepia wash. Not as, it's not as tasty as advertised. Didn't know it was advertised as being tasty. It's not. It's less tasty than that. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, it tastes awful. But uh, it does give a good effect on this. Um, it's just a, just a little, it's a little tiny thing that you can do, but it just adds a little bit of extra depth and, and detail. Points of interest. The mall. You could probably come around behind those mutton chops and paint those. So there we go. And you might pop this guy on the spinner. Ooh. And come back and do his base later. There's a couple of, couple of spots up on the purple feathers there that, where I didn't get quite underneath them, but uh, I make sure that I have another look at him on the close spinner to spot those <laughs> <laughs> and know where to go next. But yep. That's how it always is on the spinner. You put it up and you're like, ooh, that's not, mm, hmm. Yeah, that's not what I was thinking. That's different from what I thought. Okay, oh, what's going on here? Ah, there we go. Radio. So what about this guy with the uh, the black? Based on the black. Mm. Something fun. Something fun? Yeah. Something whimsical? <laughs> I think we should ash, ask. Yeah, chat. ask the chat. Okay, so chat. Wait. Give them a either or type of thing. An either or, okay. For certain parts, like the top coat, the top, the bottom, the eyes. I mean, you can do what you want, Dave. You're allowed <laughs> to do whatever you want. I'm just messing with you, Leona. You can do uh, whatever you okay, want. Okay, colors that we've got. I'm so it's prime black. So we're gonna go with uh, dry brushing predominantly. Um, over this. Look at that lovely, that sheen. But uh, my initial lot was somber gray, which is a lovely blue gray. Uh, we have other colors. We have, we have this tan, carmine marron. Tan. Oh boy. I know, it was terrible, wasn't it? Uh, so we have the tan. Uh, Obviously, my go-to is always charred brown, which is why I'm thinking something different. <laughs> and also, Gretchen has used a lot of the charred brown on there. I have. Uh, she's also used a bunch of orange fire, which we had. I used the heavy violet and the khaki. I've used that already. So I'm leaning, I am leaning towards the somber gray. Is everybody okay with that? Everyone's gonna be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Type now if you're not okay with uh, it. Type no. Type nay. <laughs> Was that type yay if you're fine nay. with it? <laughs> nay. Nay. It's almost gonna be too late. Oh, of course. Yeah, David Moffat and Lord Dracon would say tan. Uh, Sarah says, sounds great. Uh, let's give it a go. Let's 
we'll start with it. And because it's dry brushing, we've got plenty of time. Man, it starts to pick it up really quickly. I know in the, uh, the Facebook post that you put up, Leona, and you're asking about environments, uh, somebody suggested a snow oh, yeah. kind of look. Um, we don't have a white in the in amongst these this group of paints. The elfic flesh is going to be the closest, but I think we'll be able to work towards that using this um, the somber grey and an elfic kind of mi mix. Sculpt on this mini is just really cool. You're gonna have so many owl bears. We'll have like have. I think we should give one away. Should we give one away? Sure. I was gonna suggest that instead we do a like a parade of owl bears. But if you want to give one of them away, notice it's Leona who's not painting any <laughs> owl bears. Let's first to suggest we give. The painted the owlbear away. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. We should definitely do that. Which one? I mean, oh. if you do the purple one, hashtag whimsy. Hashtag whimsy? <laughs> hashtag whimsical Dave. <laughs> sure, sure. Let's do that. <laughs> Dave's like, get rid of this owlbear. Get, get, get this whimsy out of my life. <laughs> okay, well, how about the winner chooses which of these three then? Oh, like? yeah. Oh, I like yeah. that. That can work. Yep. That way they could take my, my dodgy old one. <laughs> or this one. <laughs> Sounds good. So what's the, uh, what are we going to do? Hashtag? Yeah. Hashtag whimsy? Yeah, hashtag said? whimsy. Since okay. you were whimsical today. Whimsy. <laughs> Walt says, yay. <laughs> yes, Walt, you showed up just in time for the giveaway, <laughs> for the impromptu giveaway. <laughs> Um, going back to your question, uh, Walt, where you said, uh, do they lay eggs or what? Uh, we've had a discussion about that. Uh, <laughs> too late. But uh, the general consensus is that it's more fun when they lay eggs. Yeah? Yes. And also, there is a mini that shows eggs in a nest. So. Yeah. I like to think it's just a wizard. Gone crazy. Okay. Now, when I've gone through and uh, just dry brushed here, on some of these um, feathers here, you can see that the black has stayed in the um, sort of in those recesses because the dry brushing is just picking up the the tips. What I'm going to do now is. Actually, paint those in so it'll make them a little bit lighter overall. I'm going to leave the, the shadows between them, but just on those feathers there. So it'll give a, an overall lighter appearance when the when I do that elfic flesh over the top. Adding a bit of wash over top, but I really like how his face turned out. It's looking great. I'm yeah. super excited. Very nice. Got to pop it on the close cam for a little bit. Sure. Yeah, let me. Let me add this. Or the uh, spinner cam. Real quick, so that it gets in between all those feathery bits. Yeah. That I used the tan on kind of draws them out to the to the eye a little bit more. Oh, cat has to go. Oh, bye, cat. Bye, cat. <laughs> and yes, cat. There are very few places you can have multiple egg laying discussions. <laughs> About owl bears, about mythical creatures. <laughs> a 
very few. Also, I'm glad that we're able to uh, fill that niche. I know, right? Yep. For the giveaway, uh, make sure that you're following the Painting Happy Little Minis page, because that's where I post the winner. Okay. It's the easiest way for me. So. Sure. So. Join our page. Join our page on Facebook. Um, so yeah, yeah, make sure you're following the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook page. Uh, head there, request to join, um, and we will. Oh, Le I say we. Leona will do all the hard work of randomly selecting a winner and posting information on that page. So you can get in there and uh, find out if you are the winner of one of these three crazy owl bears. It's also where we pull all the pictures from. Pardon? It's where we pull all the pictures from. Oh yeah, that's the other benefit, really. It's not just about winning owl bears. <laughs> and as Leota said, yes. All of the, uh, speaking of pulling pictures, do we have another set? Yeah. Cool. Should we uh, check those out? I think we should. Okay. Right. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, love this one. Nice job, Kelly. Variation of my Hero yeah. Forge Dragonborn. The um, I just love the yeah the highlighting and the shading on that uh, on that gold is excellent. Is a real pop. So yeah, looking fantastic, Kelly. I really enjoyed this one. I saw it on the on the group. Oh, Old Wolf Studios. So my buddy Jeff. His latest project is some uh, Dark Elder. Or Druk Drukhari for uh, 40k. And yeah, I think you love those colors. I do love those colors. Yeah. Those colors remind me of Tron. There is a bit there is a bit of a Tron. Like in a really thing. nice way. But there's definitely a sort of 80, 80s, 90s feel yeah. going on. But yeah. Oh any any time you put those the bright pinks and teals over black. It's a good color. Just combo. Super new super new wave. Looks great. Nice work, Jeff. Very cool. Oh, and Dave's uh, the four and a half five chromatic dragons done. This white dragon, looking great. I'm also loving the crystals on the base. Doing a great job there too. Crystals are so difficult. Yeah. And I'm loving the face. The face on that dragon's looking cool, and the little, the little sail, in the back between that spine and the, and the spine of the dragon, looking really good. Nice work, Dave. Oh, Nate is painting up. Uh, oh, we spent the weekend with CK Studios doing their 102 course. Ooh. So CK Studios, uh, Caleb Wissenbach and uh, Kat Jackson and a whole bunch of other wonderful people. Justin Kiefer, Sam Lance, Vince Venturella. Uh, Travel the country doing um, different painting courses. And um, the 101, 102, and I think 103 courses, but definitely 101 and 102 uh, cover airbrushing. That's really cool. And I think they're going to be having they're going to have a class in um, at Alpha Omega Hobby in Boston in late August. That I am really going to be trying to get to. But currently, my my wife's work <laughs> schedule is looking. Odd <laughs> for summer. When I say odd, it's like she's going to be traveling for three weeks of summer. But we don't know which three weeks yet. Oh, okay. She sent me a list last night and said, Is it the, are these three weeks okay with you? And I'm like, yep, they don't conflict with anything I want to do. And then this morning it was like, you know those three weeks? Well, maybe they're, they're a little bit different. So it's going to be tough. But, uh, but Nate, I think uh, you've done a great job on this, uh, this guy. I'd love to be able to... Uh, Get my airbrushing to that level. Be very cool. Sean, golf, golf. You say golf. I like that. Goth. That like blacky, inky blue with that kind of uh, with that gold. Yep. Is that gold? And yeah. It's very light yeah, gold. Yeah. yeah. It, it look, does look fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it, you're right. That, that that blue in the particularly in the the uh, membrane of the wings. It gives it so much more depth, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, it's looking really good. Very cool. And I love that crystal iron as well. Down on that blue rock. But yeah, it looks really good, Sean. And I, I like, also like the way that even though you, the, everything in the, the dragon was black or gold, the blue, he brought some extra color to mm -hmm. the base of those blue rocks. Looking good. Nice work. Oh, Chris has been painting some uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Ooh. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Denai Guerrero played Hakoya yeah. in, uh, yep, in, the Marvel, in the Marvel movies, Black Panther and... Uh, Excellent job on the face details. Endgame as well. But yeah, looking good. Love that rich red you've got in there too, Chris. Nice one. Oh, Seth's been picking up some Marvel Crisis Protocol as well. <laughs> so this is uh, from the set that Seth won uh, a few weeks ago uh, with the Spider-Man. Looking good. Uh, my friend, um, so Atomic Mass Games are holding a uh, painting competition at Adepticon oh. called The Worthy. So for, and it's all going to be Marvel? All, all Marvel Crisis Protocol, yep. Uh, my friend Nathan is painting up a piece for it, and he showed me oh, he showed me a picture last night, which is he's taken one of their dumpsters, you know, the dumpster terrain pieces that they've got, and he's got um, basically like Spider-Man has been smacked down on it, and it's buckled the, buckled the um, dumpster and the lid and that kind of thing. And then standing over him is Doc Ock. Oh, cool. Yeah, it does look great. That's right. so cool. Really awesome. So I'm excited to see how he paints that. But, uh, but yeah, this Spidey's looking great, Seth. I love the work you've done on the, um, on the uh, lining on the costume as well. Excellent. <laughs> oh, Ryan. That looks cool. Work in progress on a Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger. That is looking great. Yeah, that uh, that blue, the blue teal, and the gold, just really bright, shining. A bright and shining example of uh, the the high fantasy of Age of Sigma. But yeah, look, looking great. And even though it's got all those bright blues on the mm -hmm. like the Griffin model, he's coming down to those front feet. And do we still have that natural feel? Oh, yeah. So it's got a great contrast there. Looking good. It's a natural blue. Yeah. Yep. And uh, oh, sorry, I was going to point out as well, Ryan's using uh, also using the extra large painting handle there. <laughs> but he's got it stacked in the, the furthest points. But yeah, nice work, Ryan. Looks great. Oh, Chris has painted up Kiri, female barbarian. She's going to go to town with that axe. <laughs> Check it out. Going to raid? She looks red. Raid some rage. I, I think she definitely is. And you just know that when she does, that, um, that hood mm -hmm. is going to fall back. And then just go to town. But yeah, looking really good there. And I like the... Um, so you've got a number of different uh, warm tones going on there. So the flesh, the interior of the cloak, the fur of the cloak, the hair, and the, the wooden haft, and they're all different. You managed, you've done a great job there of, uh, of picking those all out. Definitely cool. Chris, nice one. Oh. Last one. Yep. Cool. Oh. So a Reaper figure from the Miniature Monday kits. So I think this is probably this might be painting with uh, with Josh from Mini Painting Studio um, on the Reaper Miniature Mondays. But uh, yeah, Peter, this guy's looking great. It's got a very uh, very Gandalf. That's vibe. what I was thinking. Yeah, but I, I mean, anytime you put gray on a wizard with a hat like that and a staff yeah. and a staff and and just to be fair, a sword as well. It's, it's going to be Gan it's going to be compared to Gandalf, but I, I like that you didn't um, just go grey across the whole thing. I think the um, the little kind of highlights on the beard highlights on the beard yeah really draw your eye up. I feel they like. do yeah. You're right. There's a lot of 
sort of dark going on with the, the dark browns and the, the deep grays in there and then the black of the hair, the black of the beard. Mm -hmm. But you're right, that those little pops of gray just lead you up into the rest of the face. But me. But uh, yeah, looking really good. I think that, uh, I have okay. a feeling that brown, Yeah. the base of that brown might have been. Is it charred brown? Charred brown. Charred brown. <laughs> Your favorite? All right. I, I could be wrong. I might just be my my blinkered vision. Now that I've, I've put a size. wash on and I've started on the base, you can totally put that under the clip. <laughs> okay, let's do that then. He's uh, still a little damp. It's okay though. As I didn't he, get too much on me. Yeah, you can see he's still shiny because that wash just went on. But I I like how his face turned out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, that black line mm -hmm. around the beak. It's working really well. It is more of something you'd see on falcons. Okay. But yeah. it works. Sure. <laughs> yep. Um, no, that's very cool. Nice one. Yeah. And can go. We have all this basing stuff out here, so I yep. figure <gasps> we, we some, could. Do we have some glue? Um, maybe. Look, oh, be look behind. Oh. It's behind it. Oh, over there. Oh, there is glue. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I am Mike. That's, uh, I'll just, I'll just neat. I didn't know which one you needed. It's. Right. We'll find out. Yeah. The, um, for the stones, maybe mm -hmm. glue those down with the um, super glue. But also the. Um, which one? Yeah. So this, with one? this one. Uh -huh. But uh, I, it's got the PVA glue is probably going to be better for, for all of it. It'll take a little bit of time to dry, so. Uh, and also, if you so if you put down some super glue and you put something else on it, don't put a brush near it mm -hmm. or yeah. anything like that because yeah. the, oh, the brush will wick up yeah. the super glue and ruin the brush. Oh, I'm not well. saying that from experience, but I'm saying that from experience. <laughs> it can happen. It that's can happen. fair. That's that's very fair. Uh, it usually happens to me when I'm uh, a little bit sort of too impatient, mm -hmm. where I'm really keen to. Moving along, and it's like that sh super glue should have dried by now. No, it never has. <laughs> Byron, ever hear the tale of the rabbit and the owl bear? Uh, no. Neither have I. This sounds like the setup for a joke. It does. Uh, Walt, when Easter comes, can we paint owl bear eggs? Sure. <laughs> I think that's going to be a requirement, Walt. We'll be fine with that. Cool. Also, Jeff Smith had said Sam Lenz will be in Arizona in May. Oh, okay, in May. Sam. So yeah, Sam, uh, as part of the CK Studios uh, thing. But yeah, definitely a big fan of those folks. They do some beautiful painting. Actually, uh, Caleb uh, and Kat last year went over to uh, Nottingham to do some work with the folks at uh, Games Workshop. And we know Games Workshop have their painting videos. The, um, some of the ones they've had, they put up recently for uh, talking about their Game Air, line, not the Game Air, sorry, their airbrush line of paints. Uh, they've done some videos for that. I'm painting these toe beans. Hmm? For paint, you've never heard them called that, toe beans? Toe beans, I've not heard them called toe beans. Yeah, you're on the paw. I thought that's what you might have said, but. Toe beans. Yep. It's yeah. important. <laughs> David Moffat says, uh, I usually have a jar of, uh, of ISO, I'm assuming that's isopropyl alcohol, by my side that's handy for both stripping miniatures and for superglue incidents. Good thinking. Good thinking. Josh Potter says, I wonder if someone could sculpt a little kid feeding the owlbear its broccoli. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that would be uh, that would be good. I 
I suspect there are probably some uh, cool kid miniatures around. There might have been. There's probably even some in the um, in the WizKids range. So what we'd have to sculpt then is the broccoli. <laughs> Go. All right. We should check it out. Yeah, I gotta figure out how I want to base this. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna. You gonna mess around with some of that stuff? Gonna mess around with some of that stuff. Okay. What? Where is your owlbear? That's Wait, the yeah, first that's the million dollar question. Where is my field, owlbear? In a forest. Dave, where do they live? Uh, uh. Our resident owlbear exit. I, I feel like this stuff scares me because I know it's tiny little pieces of fiberglass and I feel like the moment I sprinkle that, it's gonna be like glitter, except worse, because I can't see it. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> see you, Sarah. It won't even have the perks of glitter. It'll just, it'll just be sad. I'm gonna go for some of this brown stuff here, because I feel like we're in a swampy. Air oh no, yeah. we also have. We I'm have just, some tufts. We have some tufts. I'm gonna. Are you just gonna wimp out and go with the tufts? I might just go. I'm not gonna wimp out. Cheese day. <laughs> totally wimping out. I'm gonna add some of the tufts <laughs> with some of the, some of this. Whatever that is. <laughs> right. Oh, the, um, the lichen? Yeah. Add some rocks, maybe. Right. <laughs> bye, well, Sarah. Thanks for joining. Oh, bye, Sarah. If I can open this. Walter said it's a dancing owl bear. Owl bear. Dancing owl bear in a show? Needs a disco. So you're saying it should have like, should there be like floorboards beneath it? On a stage? Lots of possibilities. So Dave, what gray are you using? Uh, the gray. So the, yeah. um, the base gray that I used, uh, or the, the gray that I used for the um, dry brushing was um, the game color somber gray. Uh, there, and so at the moment I've just uh, I've dry brushed it all gray, and these uh, the longer feathers on the wings there, and some on the shoulders, and then a couple underneath here and around the, around the face. I'm just mixing in some of the um, ooh, where it is it there it is the elfic flesh to the um, to the somber gray. Just to lighten those areas up a bit for when I come through, I'm going to do a um, a dry brush with the the elfic gray and a mix. But I wanted the some of those feathers to kind of have their these little channels in there. I wanted to have those filled and a little bit lighter before I did the dry brush. So I'll just give a, a slightly different texture look on there. So I guess it's almost picking out the, the difference between the, the feathers and the, the fur. <laughs> Josh says, owlbears live wherever an owlbear wants to live. This is true. And Albert moves into your uh, basement. It's the yeah. Albert's basement now. Albert's basement now. <laughs> when they complain about you walking around upstairs, you move out. You there was, I had place. a spider incident uh, a little while back. Yeah. yeah. And, and Albert ate it? Or? I, I wish. <laughs> I had a rather large spider decide that he was going to make residence in my downstairs bathroom. Right. And it scared me half to death because <laughs> I was not expecting him. And he was rather large. I'm now, I'm scared of spiders. Okay. So even normal spiders are too big of spiders for me. But this guy was like quarter sized. Like so, as was, in the, so, the size of a quarter? Yeah. Uh. Yes. Are you telling that to? Yes, I am. To an Australian that, because, you, that you likened to because the Steve bigger, Owen earlier. the bigger spiders, the tarantula-sized ones that you guys get, yeah. those are in a different league. 
Those right. are, that's separate. Right. <laughs> that's... Yeah. But he made he made a little house down there, and I had, oh, I was not happy. And I have several friends that really enjoy insects and bugs, <laughs> and they're just like, I love bu spiders. <laughs> <laughs> The same friend that I helped clean their uh, right. house with the secret room. Yep. They were like, yeah, I love spiders. And I was like, please come to my house. Please come to my house and clean it with spiders. You can have him. Excellent. Okay. So I'm not going to go, uh, first I'm not going to do a dry brush with directly with the Elphic Flesh. I'm doing a mix here of the Elphic Flesh and the Somber Grey. But it should help. Uh, bring that together pretty well. I just uh, pausing to look at the time because I was a little bit afraid that I might be running out, but nope, we'll definitely get this guy finished. Yeah, I'm actually going to have a completed one this time. And based. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. Like, oh man, time. I am. I've gotten the, the timing down for once in my life. <laughs> What were you going to say, Leona? Oh, article in, um, oh, in February's issue, March's issue? March. I can't remember. What did I do? That's about basing. Oh, about basing? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's why we brought it up. Oh. See, I'm, I'm terrible. It's just, it, the, reason I, the reason I am terrible <laughs> is that terrible. Uh, I, I'm not terrible. Yeah, because I've, I've just done the um, the article for, like last week I finished off the article for the April issue, I think. April or May. See you, Jeff. Oh. So I didn't even know what it is. Bye, Jeff. Bye. Oh, bye, Jeff. Jeff Smith. Bye. But, uh, yeah, so the I've done two two articles on basing uh, for the Painting Happy, uh, sorry, the Painting Happy Little Minis articles for Game Trade Magazine. Uh, so they're in the, the February and the March? Yep. Is that right? Okay. Um, first one, it talks about very basic basing. See what I did there? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's very basic basing. Uh, so textures and that kind of thing, different um, materials that you can use. Uh, and then sort of how to go about painting them. And the second one is uh, sort of some more involved uh, kind of ideas. Originally, like when I first started painting miniatures, the the standard way was like um, was actually glue down some um, what's it called flock. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a very f small granulated cork kind of stuff. So take regular cork bark and grind it up so that it's very fine, and it was dyed green. And you just use some PVA and glue that to your base. So okay. your bases were all flat. Everything was flat. It was just flat green. It looked like they were walking around on a um, golf green all the time. Yep. So that was the kind of the the original way of doing things. Uh, it was a fairly standard way. But uh, yeah, over the over the years, as people decided that they didn't want all of their miniatures standing on golf greens. How lame. I know. People are super lame. Um, they, uh, things evolved and people started doing some excellent work with different colors and textures and so on. Um, but one thing that has kind of always stuck with me, or stuck with me for a long time, is that um, working, uh, it's always good if you have a, a base that has sort of three textures on it. And those three textures can be any three textures. Mm -hmm. But as long as they're three sort of differentiate three different textures that you can pick out. So it might be, um, for example, on this one, you've got the stone that it's standing on. Mm -hmm. You could do tufts of grass around there, and then something like a skull, for example, or some snow. Some berries. Hmm? Some berries. Some berries. Yeah. Oh. A, that begs the, the age-old question. What does an owlbear eat? No, not what does an owlbear eat. <laughs> What's the age-old question? Um, 
Uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's one of those duh kind of things. I don't know if I can say it on, on three. Does a bear poop in the woods? Does an owl bear poop in the woods? And what might be in that poop? Oh, you're asking if it has pellets. It has pellets? Like an owl. Does it have pellets like an owl? Like a, or does it have like enormous steaming piles like a bear? <laughs> which, of the, which of the two does it have? You ask the hard hitting questions. We ask, we ask the big questions here. I'm, well, I'd, I'd like to think they're the interesting questions. Sure, we can all make assumptions, but. Okay. That, that might be a third texture on that base. <laughs> it might be a third texture. You know? It, it possibly could be. Josh has goblin green bases. Goblin green. Josh knows where it's at. It's kind of funny. I had a friend who would only paint, uh, only do his bases that way. He was a brilliant painter. And his painting always sort of evolved, but uh, his basing never did. It always stayed exactly the same. Gluing myself to the base. Gluing yourself to the base. Do I count as a basing? <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. David Moffat says, dare to be different. Different. Base with dark, dark angels, angels green. green. Yes, well, it's quite different. Quite different there. Also, Walter suggests we should write a book, the ecology of an owl bear. Ecology of an owl. <laughs> I'd like to see it uh, included somewhere, but we should definitely. Um... Your second book, Dave. My second book. Armies, legions, and hordes, and owl bears. <laughs> <laughs> armies, legions, armies, legions, and hordes of owl bears. <laughs> no less than two hundred owl bears included. Oh yeah. <laughs> that would be great. I think. Uh, yeah, I think maybe I won't. <laughs> Yep, just messed up that eye. We'll come back to that. All right. I How's it looking? I'm liking them. I like it. It's a very swampy here. I'll put them up here. Very swampy. A very swampy vibe. base. Yeah. Cool. Get there in a minute. Any moment now. <laughs> Oh yeah, that looks great. Yeah, it's very um, like the wilderness. He's yep. That's great. whatever meandering through, rumbling through. Yeah, my fingers are glued together, but it was worth it. <laughs> they bring out the white in his face. They do. Ties it all in that our that artistic eye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It is fantastic. It does look great, though. Uh, yeah. Well done. Very bear. Very owl. Very owl bear. Very grumpy. grumpy. <laughs> Incredibly grumpy. Uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah, I gotta catch up. I better hurry up with this one. Yeah. Yeah, you got ten minutes. Ten minutes. Right here. Yep. Is everybody ready? Here we go. Put them up there as well. Put them up there. Okay. Can we fit three of them? I'm going to have to do the double basing. I was going to oh. say, maybe Gretchen can do the Can do the basing for one. me? Do yeah, the I purple can add one. some sticks. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to add some sticks to this one? I'll add some sticks. Okay. Now, because I didn't use the, the khaki in the, in the um, feathers or fur for this one, mm -hmm. I'm going to use it for the, the basing. Give it something different. I feel like if I use the really bright green, it'll be like Joker colors. Way too much? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's way too much. <laughs> too much whimsy. Too much whimsy. You maxed out. <laughs> I, I totally maxed out on my whimsy. Uh, and I feel like this green is, I. we need like a an in-between green. We do. We do. 
Um, maybe maybe don't worry about the the lichen. Just go with the the tufts. Just go with the tufts. Yeah. So that is the in between green. Yep. I think so. That would work well. Very nice and desaturated. Yep. Good idea. So. Also, Dave, Josh Potter says, I lived through the great GW red period. Was Good that ever on the bases? Red? Oh, the red period? Yeah. Yeah. So in the um, sort of mid-90s to late 90s, um, the guy who was in charge of the Games Workshop studio, uh, when the miniature painters would bring him their fin the, f the finished models that were going to end up on the box covers, mm -hmm. um, he would look at them and go, yeah, I like it, but it needs more red. So they have to go back and find out, find a place on the model to put some red. And they got to the point where they just didn't. They knew that he was going to say that, so right from the start they included um, red in different areas. Uh, and now, if you were to go back and look at any of the miniatures from that period, every single one of them has red, has red on it. So. He just, he knew what he wanted. He did. Um, apparently he was actually, um, had uh, a color blindness issue. Ah. But the, having the red gave him a very good, gave a very good contrast for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. But it is a, it is, it is a famous thing amongst uh, veteran games workshop gamers. We go. This one might just need a couple of tufts, and we'll be good. I will do a little bit of highlighting on the, the thing. So on the, the khaki base here, I'm going to highlight it. Um, so it kind of looks a little bit like stand, sandstone at the moment. Um, I'm going to do some highlighting by mixing in some of the Elphic flash. And I was watching a painting video this morning that explained why. So I used the Elphic flesh in the highlighting for the, mm -hmm. um, for the owlbear itself, and now I'm gonna use it in the highlighting for the stone. People might go, well, they're two different things, Dave. Why would you do the, the same highlighting color? Well, do you know the? To make it flow. Make, to make it, it flow, kind of look make, nice. to yeah. connect it. Yeah. So it's all under the same light. It's all got that. There's uh, has a, there's the same has the same sort of cast to it. Yeah. So. Brings it together. Yep. Uh, David says, "Are there glasses that can correct color blindness?" There are, but it depends on the type of color blindness you have, because different types of color blindness are caused by different things. Um, I think they're most commonly used to correct red green color blindness. I think that makes sense. Okay. I might just go straight for the elfic flesh rather than mixing it in. Because <laughs> we're almost out of time. You can do it. You have five whole minutes. Five? Oh, okay. Plenty of time. I'll go yeah. back to mixing. <laughs> five whole five minutes. Five whole minutes. That's a lot. I'm telling you, it's at the end of the at the end of a show. Five minutes at the end of the show is not a lot of time. <laughs> Five, five minutes before the show, it's like, yeah, that's cool. I can roll in. I can, we can sit down and we can relax. We can have a chat and get mic'd up, all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the show, it's a little bit more pressure at the end. Oh, well. Paint faster, Dave. I know. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Lord Jaconum, five-minute warning. It's true. Okay. I think this beak needs to be just a touch brighter. That's a nice color, though. I like that. Yeah. For the beak? Yeah. Yep. That was, um, that's the, what gold are we using? We're using the gold yellow. Oh. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. Looks great. Oh. Very cool. 
So uh, for the big, originally I mixed some uh, gold yellow and the khaki. And now I'm just mixing in a little bit of the, um, oh, there it is, elfic flesh back into it. Uh, it's amazing okay. though to see like us using the same color palette. Yeah, yeah. And so what you're able to produce with that though. Exactly. Um, I mean, we've got three very different very different albers. Very different albers. Um, which is great. And considering it was like 12 paints. Yeah. 12 different paints. So you can get a lot done. There we go. Actually, I'm not going to worry about any tufts. I'm going to mm -hmm. do something different again. Oh. Because I've got two minutes. <laughs> a little bit more of that sepia. So I am just going to make it like um, standing on some rock at the edge of a desert. So I'm going to take some of the sepia here. Um, a little bit of the violet ink, mix that in. This is just experimenting. It should darken it a little bit. Darken it a little bit, give it a little bit of, um, of that purple, which is going to be good against the desaturated yellow. And then just a dark, cool color. paint that. Um, looks a little bit, uh, a bit odd at the moment, but once you go back and uh, with a drier brush and push it around a little nice. bit more. Yeah. And it'll bring that coolness into the rocks that you see with all the feathers. Yep. I'll grab a little bit more purple to make sure it does that. <laughs> Got me worried about it now. <laughs> I'd have a job to do. I wasn't sure Listen, it was okay. that job. I did not take so many classes of color mm -hmm. theory. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. <laughs> to not pick good. it up. At least once. Okay. Oh. There we go. You know how many times I have to draw a circle in my okay. college Color career? Wheel. A, a lot. lot. So much. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. So what you could do with this, if you wanted to, you could then go, you come back, do some highlights, mm -hmm. do some more shading, do some highlights, some more shading, just work it back and forth and build up those layers. I think it'll look cool. Okay. Ready? Three owlbears of varying degree of cool to warm, all mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all was terrifying. It, was it a little draconian said before? Or oh, somebody said before? No, it was on the on one of the uh, the painted minis. Oh. It was uh, oh, a yeah. oh. half owl, half bear, all grumpy. Yep. I, it looks like owlbears from different parts of the world, though. It does. Which is really nice. It does. I think like, that's cool. The ones that you'd meet in the forest, like your more tropical owlbear. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. It's more parrot bear. Parrot bear, yeah. yeah. It happens sometimes. Toucan bear. Listen, you, the wizard works with what it works <laughs> with. <laughs> and, and then more, more of your arctic or desert kind of... Tundra. Tundra, tundra, yeah, tundra. That'd be a great tundra bear. Yeah. bear. Tundra we'll owl bear. Right in. Yep. Oh. Fantastic. Now, that's, that was great fun. So that was us working with uh, exclusively with uh, Vallejo Paints yeah. uh, on WizKids oh, Owlbears. <laughs> Only 12 of them, exactly. <laughs> um, an incredible amount there. Uh, so, yeah, great choices, uh, Jason. Well done. Um, so, yeah, so they're all from the WizKids Vallejo and Vallejo uh, Paint Night Kit. Yep. So... Head to your local uh, gaming store, find out when they're going to do the March paint night, sign up for it. Uh, if they aren't currently planning on doing demand it, demand it. Demand it. <laughs> get a whole group of your friends to go in and demand it. And then make sure, if you're going to demand it though, nicely. Oh. If you're going to demand it, make sure you are going to show up for that paint night. Um, and uh, yeah, your local game store should be able to uh, sign up with their Alliance sales rep. And then you too can paint with us because we'll also, we're going to try to do the next paint night as not like at a paint night, but on the show. Oh, definitely on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For much. Uh, what did you say? Leona said it was a red dragon. So, mm, so yeah. we're excited about that. It's going to be awesome. Cool. Get the dragon, paint with us. Yep. Okay. Well, we have painted three whole owlbears today and based them and completed them. And I think that's the first that we have managed to do that 
thanks to Vallejo and Paint Night keeping us on task. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we didn't have any decisions to thanks make. Thanks to WizKids and Vallejo. <laughs> <laughs> we could complete things. Fantastic. And, and um, the, as I said, the model is fantastic. The sculpt on really it is good. great. It works fantastically for dry brushing or for washes. And uh, Yep, very cool. So, yeah, we're excited about the, uh, the Red Dragon for next month. I am super excited about the Red Dragon. Yep. Red's an interesting color, and I'm excited to see what the limited palette is. Yeah, that's going to be that's great. Because gonna, that's going to influence things. I think so. so. Yep. Um, make sure, for those of you who did the hashtag, that you are part of our Facebook group uh, so that you can see if you've won. <laughs> yep. And the hashtag was whimsy. It was, hashtag whimsy, because you were whimsical today. I was whimsical you today. You branched out. I'm so proud of you. I brought the whimsy. You Thank did. You. <laughs> you brought the whimsy. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate the recognition. Next time glitter, whimsy. right? No, no. <laughs> no glitter. No glitter. <laughs> it was a short-lived whimsy, but we enjoyed <laughs> it while it lasted. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, all right. Well. So uh, next week, I think we're going to be painting some night haunts. From Games Rig Workshop. Rig spooky with it. Spooky? Yeah. Spooky? Spooky. Actually, yeah, I have some minis that I should put up on the group, um, in the Facebook group. Well, yeah, do that, Dave. That are spooky. Spooky <laughs> minis. So I will totally do that. Yep. Cool. All right. Excellent. Well, that's it for today. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. <laughs> that is it for Unless tonight. You have I got nothing else. Oh. I'm sorry. You've been oh, trying God. to you've been trying to close the show for the last five minutes, and I just keep interrupting. I try so hard to close it gently, and then we get so caught up that I'm like, "Well, here we are." <laughs> Let's talk for another hour. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Painting happy little minis. We'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.